For our first tip, it will be useful for everybody no matter what size or shape you're in. Most of our cameras, if not all, have wide lenses. Although the distortion is quite subtle, it will still widen your body if you stay on the sides. And I know you don't want to be the center of attention because most of the times we are shy. So we tend to go towards the end of the photo, especially in a group setting. But trust me on this, try to be in the middle of every photo you're taking to give your body and height justice. Hey ladies, welcome back to Mayumi TV. If you're new here, my name is Mayumi and just like you, I'm in the journey towards getting it together. So if you're interested in videos about self-improvement, plus size videos included, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell right beside so you are updated every time there's a new video like this one. I have interacted with a lot of women in my life and I noticed that it doesn't matter if you're skinny or fat, everybody, everybody have some sort of body image issues or things that we are insecure about. And if you follow me on Instagram, you would know that I'm the queen of confidence. And not gonna lie, a huge part of that is because I take flattering photos and videos. It definitely adds on to your confidence. So today I'm gonna teach you what are my go-to flattering angles that will definitely make you less insecure or make you have that confidence whenever you strike up a pose. Tip number two is about optical illusions. We have to remember that whatever's near to the camera will appear bigger, fatter, plumper in comparison to whatever is away from the camera. For comparison, It's common sense, but it's something that we have to take in mind whenever we're taking a photo. So in a group setting, let's say you're on a table and someone's gonna take a photo, the best angle for me is either behind or in the middle of that dining table. So you don't look as large in comparison to whoever is sitting in front of the camera. This applies especially if you're taking photos with one or two friends of yours, because I live in Asia and I am huge. I am humongous in comparison to my peers. So my favorite trick is to take one to three steps away from my friend and the camera so that our height difference is not so obvious and I won't appear humongous in comparison. Let's move on on how to project and make love to that camera. <laughs> so let's start with our face. I'm on my heavier side right now. I have a very round face. Let me get this off my face so that you can see the full roundness and all its glory. My usual oval face is looking more circular. <laughs> I have multiple chins as well. When I gain weight, this is where it's most obvious. And I don't usually put contour, so I'm a lot rounder. That's it. When someone's taking my photo, I intuitively look 45 degrees on the side of the camera and smile in the hopes that it will accentuate my jaw, but it actually just emphasizes the lack thereof. And if you see me in this angle, you can literally draw a circle on my face and it will fit just right in. My jaw is not prominent, my lower cheek is the highlight of the photo, and my cheekbones are not shown, nor is my chin. So my advice, instead of looking 45 degrees, is go all the way on the side to accentuate your nose, your cheeks, and your chin. This profile angle will give your face justice. After. And what I like to do to amp it up a bit is to look above, smile. Now your double chin is gone, your neck is elongated. And then bring my shoulders up a bit, lower the other one down, create that angle, roll it towards the camera, and show that collarbone. So let me look back into the camera. Amazing, right? <laughs> okay, next. Now, if you don't want your profile view, my best angle is actually just looking straight into the camera. So this is just me, relaxed. Move my head forward. And now I know a lot of people are exaggerating this. And what they do is just they move their neck forward. And that's not how you need to do it. You need to move your forehead forward. Elongate that neck. Push your chin down a little bit and smile. I've got a you have to elongate your neck. You have to push your forehead forward and not your chin or neck or jaw so that it's slightly tilted. Point your chin towards your body or your heart. That it widens your forehead because it's nearer to the camera and it makes your chin a lot pointier because it's away from the camera. 
Again, don't forget about the shoulders. Create an angle. Push it forward. Elongate your neck. Chin out, chin down. Out and down. So your chin must be out and down. You can also put your chin closer to your shoulders. See, what you don't see is that my head is actually all the way in front of the camera. It's not exaggerated movement, it's just those subtle differences that would make your body look a lot more proportioned than it usually does if you're relaxed. Last thing I like to do when I smile towards the camera is to subtly bite the lower part of my cheek. This is something that I do intuitively and initially when you're starting to do it, maybe it would look awkward because you're not used to it, but it's just something that I naturally do whenever I take a photo. When it's normal, there's no lines in here when I smile, but when I do this, my cheekbones are a lot more prominent because the roundness on the lower part of my cheek is being bitten. That's the key to it. <laughs> when exaggerating, this is how it looks like. Obviously, you cannot exaggerate, so it has to be subtle and eventually it will be intuitive for you too. This makes my face a lot more flattering. I wish I'm making sense because these tips are really useful and that's the reason why I'm so photogenic. Arguably, I look even better on photos than in person, but I don't give a f at least I look good somewhere. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our torso. <sighs> relax, relax. It shows when you're not at ease when you're taking these photos. Just being your usual comfortable, secure self. Let me tell you, okay? If you're here, good for you. You're trying to be more confident. You are stepping up your A-game. But not all of us are secure. And when we're insecure, we're shy. We are in our shell. We don't want attention. We don't want that confidence confidence to shine through it shows it shows in every photo that you will take confidence doesn't have to be loud my favorite type of confidence is the silent type someone secure but magnetic and that's what we're trying to achieve here you don't have to exaggerate your moves you just have to own your body and create shapes and silhouettes that will just embrace your curves and highlight whatever you're most confident about now in terms of our body language to make sure that my curves are accentuated i don't try to hide those curves i accentuate it okay now what do we do for our body what you want to do is just relax right just relax but we tend to slouch when we're relaxed because we're too at ease. this is something that i got from yoga just imagine that there's a string trying to pull your back above that automatically improves your posture right so this is me but when i imagine that string suddenly my posture is way better right so that's number one next thing our arms Okay. Next to our bellies, the arms, arms, arms is number one insecurity for all girls. The arms. I don't know why. Like my arms are just nice. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong in the comments saying that your arms isn't one of your insecurities. I'll wait. <laughs> I would even dare say that 90% of us girls are very insecure about how our arms appear. That's why we tend to shy away from sleeveless tops. And that's the reason why I also wore a tube top today so that you can see the effect this poses would have with your bare and exposed arms. Now that your posture is better, what most girls tend to do is to try to squeeze their arms in hoping that it will make it look thinner. But actually, it just makes your fat and muscles dense and it just gives you that boxy shape instead and it makes our arm look bigger because there's no space in between and you're gonna show those arm cellulites so what I like to do instead is to roll my shoulders back lift my arms and tuck it away so you can imagine this pose as just putting your fingers into your pocket have to relax your arms and just let it hang just pretend that it's hanging in the air because the less 
squeeze it is, the more that it will just follow its natural shape. So for this trick, you can just imagine your hands are in your pocket. Like, whoo! What are the natural movements and poses that remind you of this? It will be putting your hands in your pocket, fixing your jeans, holding your purse. That's my basic arm pose. I think this is my most important tip to be honest. Just create triangles, hand on your hips, hand on your head, hand on both your hips and head, like a triangle outside. The negative space inside it is also a triangle. That's why you will see me holding my hair a lot. And I have a triangle here, I have a triangle here, here and I usually top it off with a triangle on my foot as well. You see how my curves are just accentuated instantly? This, 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 this. Something that I love to do is creating the inverted number four on your legs. This is another triangle shape that you can create with your body. Women are naturally curvy. If your body type is more on the masculine side and you want to look more feminine and soft, you have to embrace your curves or create those curves. For most women, we have our ever-reliable hips to think. This is my body shape right now. It has a good amount of curves, but wait till you see what I do with them that you'll be like, You'll be, I don't know how to whistle, but I want to accentuate and hug my curves, create that S curve, that softness, that femininity. And the best way to do that is to lean on one side of your leg and shift that weight. This automatically makes my hip on this side way curvier than it is. So you can relax the other knee or point it towards. The thing is, I don't know when to stop, so I exaggerate that even more. Right? From here, it becomes to this, and then it becomes to this, and becomes this. And my hand position is where I want that part to look a lot slimmer than it is. Lean towards one leg, put my arms towards the upper body so that it appears smaller. Create a triangle on my knee, create a triangle on the other hand, look up, project. Let me show you what I do when it's on my profile. Now, this is me slouching. I have my big belly, like not very flattering at all. Let's accentuate that. First step, a thread pulling my spine upwards and improving my posture, lifting my arms just ever so slightly and relaxing it. Next thing I do is to highlight my bottom curve, shift my weight on one leg. It's usually the one that's away from the camera. I tilt that bum by creating that triangle. Make sure that your toes are always pointed in whatever photo that you take. This is a lot more flattering. You're lying down, you're sitting down, you're standing up, you're crossing your leg. Whatever position that is, make sure that your toes are always pointed. So we don't want to appear bloated and I usually am. I'm, what I do to make my belly a lot more flattering is I don't usually breathe in because then it makes your upper body look bigger. What I do is I tighten my core. And if you don't know how that works, just basically imagine that someone just punches you right in your gut. And when your middle area is tense, that's how to tighten your core. Okay, you're welcome. I'm so bloated. You can see that my lower belly is just as big as my chest area right now. It's not the most flattering. We want it to look a lot flatter than it is. So what I do, I don't breathe in because then it makes your ribs expand. And what we like to do instead is I tighten my core and I use that motion to tilt my back even further. And that's automatically gonna make my lower belly look smaller than it is. You can exaggerate as much as you want, whatever looks good for your body, because I have very thick thighs as well, so I can get away with really slanting my back all the way backwards. Oh my goodness, my shape is a lot even better now. You can neutralize your arms, give a bit of space in between your body and your arms. Just let it hang, relax, not dense, not squeeze. Do you see this round part of your shoulders? I know, maybe for you, you think that they're hiding, but it's there, it's there. Believe that it's there. Find it and accentuate it, and then point that round part of your shoulders forward. Okay, so this is normal, and then forward, right? Like this, relax it, let it lag, and put it there. When my hands are hanging this way, it usually covers the bulge, and since I'm arching my back, it makes my chest appear bigger and you can see now that I have that S-shaped Jessica Rabbit worthy pose. Create a triangle with your other arm or create a triangle with both arms, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs>
As you can see, I don't have a tie gap, right? And I love embracing that by doing the mermaid pose where I put my other foot closer to the other and just creating that shape with my hips. And bending my knees closer to the camera and that accentuates my fuller hips. Maybe shift your weight on the other side or tilt the other. So you have to hug and embrace your hips. Shift your body weight. Make curves within your curves. You are a mermaid. But if you want to create that illusion that you have a thigh gap, what I want you to do is to put your feet away from each other, tilt your back or make an arch out of it, create that gap between your legs, and point the knee towards that direction. Tilting it. So on the side, this is how it looks like. Put your feet apart arch your back behind, create that gap between your legs, and point the knee towards that side. Again, this is how I stand normally. Your feet apart, arch your back, create that gap between those legs. Point your knee towards an outward angle, and this pose makes your thigh look leaner with that tie gap in between. Of course, we want to take everything to the next level, so what we do is we shift our weight on this hip, arch our back, boom! Where I want my hands to be placed would be on your upper torso, create that difference in your waist and your hip, or you can rest it on the side of your hip, hug those curves, and create that triangle negative space. This one will be here too, point my shoulders closer to the camera, and boom, I have an S shape. Accentuate your S shape by putting your hands on the side of your hips but not totally covering it up so that it is still fuller. Create amazing shapes with your body. Think fuller hips. So when you think of it in a proportion perspective, think hips to waist ratio. Emphasize the difference between the two. When we see the difference between our hips and our waist, something is bound to look smaller than the other, especially if when you're shifting your weight and emphasizing the other. Another favorite pose of mine to accentuate that hourglass shape and embrace my fuller hips is to find something to lean on to. Usually it's a tree or a door and what you do is you want to stay away from the door, put your arms up, use your arms to lean on the door and creating that beautiful angle that we want, tilt your upper body closer to the door and your hips away from it. Shift your weight to the other side and there you have it. You can see that my hips are bigger, my chest is towards this way, my hips is the other, creating that S shape. I've got a plan to fill Free and love from the taking of the kill I'm good in front but you can't see You can't see, you can't see Okay, whew! That tip is very important, especially if your hips isn't really the widest or you're a trans woman where you want to make it appear like you have those feminine curves. Let's just make sure that you tilt your hips one way or the other and make sure that you accentuate those curves because that's what makes it soft and feminine. What we are often trying to achieve is to appear like we have a tighter frame and we're doing something that's counterproductive by tightening everything up and compressing all of our insecurities, our arms, our chin, our push our hips but instead of thinking that you want to compress and squeeze and tighten everything up you have to create proportion angles shapes silhouettes it's all about those shapes those s soft feminine shapes this will be achieved by swinging your arms across widening your hips elongating your neck so make use of these different parts of your body that will take the eyes away from the center or the largest chunk of your body and distribute that weight i love flattering photos and videos but not far-fetched from reality because what is perfect is often fake so please don't be afraid to show your flaws because it is what makes us realistic and relatable it is what makes us connect with other people Whew, that is it for today thank you very much for joining joining me in today's video. I hope it was helpful. Tag me in your photos if you use any of these poses or share it with your friends if they can use some help. Please don't forget to comment down below what you want to see me do next and I'll see you on my next one. Kisses.